Cameron there. Well, our guest of the day, Fiona Phillips, is an Alzheimer's Society ambassador. Christian Guy is from the Centre for Social Justice, the think tank founded by the Work and Pension Secretary, Ian Duncan Smith. Welcome to the programme. Come to you in just a moment. That commitment um, made by David Cameron, did it impress you? Um, as, no, because what really is needed is, is get, well, so many things are needed. It's a huge thing. I don't know where to start, really. But I spoke to um, David Cameron right after, actually. Um, he held a round table thing back at number 10, and I interviewed him after. And he only recently clocked a, a sign of ageing, and it's, you know, old people saying silly things. It's only recently that he clocked it that but it was actually a disease. that's progress, isn't it? That, that he's actually progress, taking it on board. But the money he's put up for, um, re we're 30 years behind in this country with research because of lack of funding, and, and quite frankly, the funding that he offered and has put in, he's, he's, he's arranged to double it, but it, it's, still, it's still not fit for purpose, really. But it is good that it's being talked about and it's being given national importance, but it's not enough. What about your situation? Both your parents had Alzheimer's. Tell us a little bit about how that affected you. Um, they both had it very early on, actually. My mum started showing signs in her 50s, and my dad in his late 60s, and my whole... Oh, I mean, I gave up a big job because something had to give, and I couldn't have children, ageing parents, and do the whole lot, which I inevitably did do. And they were living at a distance from me in Wales. I was in London. Um, eventually, they both went into care, but... But you looked after them for a, a well, amount of time as, as much as, as you I could. could yeah. I mean, is the problem here that no one's really addressed the scale of the problem that is facing all of us, really, with this issue? I think there's been a gradual awakening, but Fiona's dead right. This thing has taken a long time to, to, to emerge. What we've seen, for example, in relation to cancer, much more investment in research mm. and care over the last three or four decades. But dementia has been building, and now by, 20, uh, by 2050, we'll have 1.7 million people with dementia. At the moment, it's 800,000. And I think one, one of the things that often features is that people deal with it at a crisis point because it's very difficult to plan to have conversations about this issue. But Often at crisis point, people then go straight into A&E, then they feel they can't go back home because there hasn't been the support, so they go into care homes. And actually, it's very difficult for families to have that hard conversation about the future, but as much as we can plan, uh, it's better for, for everybody if we can do that and to face up to it. Right. We'll have a national strategy where, which, ha, it, it, which ends in 2015. National strategy now. President Obama in America has a 25 year strategy for dementia. Ours ends in 2015, and so far we don't know what's going to follow. It's with. a classic example of politicians wanting to pass the problem on to the next group yeah. who turn up, but we can't keep kicking this down the track. But who has to deal with it? Who, who has to actually grapple this problem? Because there is uh, an endless discussion on this program and, and, and lots of others like it about whether it is a social problem, social care problem, whether it is a health problem. If it was a health problem, classified that way, would that change it? I think in care homes, for example, you've had a false distinction for a while where most care homes now are nursing homes. They're not just residential facilities. But the way we funded nursing homes has been to, to, to keep that quite separate. There are things we can do. We know, for example, there are certain risk factors that we can take some control of, diet, smoking, exercise, weight. There's also the planning point. Can we have some conversations now so that we're not trying to react to things at crisis point? But there's also a challenge for government. How are we funding care homes? Right. What kind of care is going well, in? Let's come to the money. How, how, how do you pay for it? You know, I mean, well, do people have to just accept that if more and more people are going to get some form of, of dementia or Alzheimer's, and maybe they're going to get it earlier on, they're going to have to use some of their own resources? You know what? Because it manifests itself eventually as a mental health problem, mm. It is treated as the bum end of everything, if you pardon the expression. It, it's classed as needing social care rather than medical care. It's a physical disease. If it, was, if it was treated as a physical disease, the care of those people with dementia would be funded by the NHS. Do so you think it would make a big difference to reclassify it in Absolutely. that way? Absolutely. And, and it, it, we shouldn't even be talking about this. I was at a hospital down in Portsmouth. Um, they vote, they're, they're making their uh, um, geriatric wards dementia friendly. And the nurses were all saying they keep talking about this time bomb going off it's gone off and and we're chase we're playing catch-up already now how much money would have to go in to the NHS for example um, or maybe you deal with this problem now in terms of providing the right sort of care and nursing perhaps at home well it already costs billions and we're well short of what it takes to deal with the problem now when you look at the way the trends are moving in the next three or four decades we are going to face up to the fact that this is going to cost a lot more than we've currently been prepared to, to invest and if people play their part 
people. What do you uh, mean by that? But what do you mean? Because you yeah. seem to be skirting around the issue of saying, what is it that you want people well, to do? Should they be saying, we're going to have to sell our family home later on to pay for the care? Well, uh, that I think is part of the real realistic discussion we have to say, uh, that we have to have, because we have to challenge the idea that our home is something we just want to pass on to our children. Uh, our assets need to help us through as well, and a lot of children, I think, feel that if mum and dad need to use that money, they shouldn't feel that it's protected for them. So selling our home is an important part of the discussion. Yeah, How do you feel about the that? The younger huh? generation are being disenfranchised from the property market at the moment. They simply can't get on the ladder. So what? The bigger mm -hmm. question is not how you fund social care, which is a problem, but how things like health and social care work together and um, what kind of care we want. The big debate is how we fund it. No one's really saying what kind of standards matter. Well, it has how to be a national care for? fund, doesn't it? An insurance that you can opt into and if you don't, you have to pay for your own care. But a really good example is training. GPs, mm. care workers don't often know how to spot this. Uh, this, the onset of it, and so it comes at crisis point again. That doesn't cost billions of pounds, but it's just an awareness that we're slowly catching up to, but it's taken too long. I mean, the problem being that if it's the early onset, so if you're in your 50s, I mm -hmm. presume that medical staff aren't necessarily looking for it, are they? Because no, it's not. still, at that point, no. relatively unusual. But, you know, even, even if it is diagnosed, and it's still only being diagnosed at the rate of about half of people who go in presenting with cognitive difficulties, only about 50% of them now, which is a rise, are being diagnosed. But once, once you've been diagnosed, you're pretty much told get home and get on with it. Right, so there's nothing there. Is there yeah. nothing there there's for you? There's more now than there ever was. I mean, thank you, the Alzheimer's Society actually has done a lot there's a dementia friend scheme now where people are being trained to recognise what it's like living with dementia and so that, you know, you're not... It's a great local ostracized. project as well who are bringing people together at local level. It's too sporadic, but some wonderful charities saying we yeah. will come with you on the journey as families. What about, though, the carers? They're unpaid. They're usually family yes. members. Yeah. Or what happens to them? Because it can go on yeah. for you know, 10, 20 years. Well, we've looked at unpaid carers who save, by the way, about 8 billion a year for the economy, yeah. doing incredible work. And we've looked at things like social prescriptions where GPs could actually just help carers get some respite. But also, the workforce that's official, often there are problems with very low pay, uh, people doing the 15-minute flying visits, the training isn't there. So the experience of being cared for professionally is a problem. Would you mm. like them to be paid more in those care homes dealing with those specific problems? They have to be in the longer term because what value does it say we place mm. on the care going into some of the most vulnerable people in this country if we won't pay them barely minimum wage. Do you agree yeah, with that? Absolutely. There has to be a gold standard um, training, a qualification in care, I think, and commensurate salary. Mm. It has to be a professional so qualification. The churn is so high. People leave so quickly. Yeah. All right, Christian Guy, thank you thank very you. much. News.